103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, August 2nd, 2020, and I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Guys, I have a great song for you. It's a great Christian song. The chords are G, C, and F, but I forgot all the lyrics, but it's a really good song. I'm, I'm sure you guys will. <laughs> <I forgot the laughs> well, how it for us? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it goes like, mm, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, God. <laughs> That's classic. And our, our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs, George, uh, and Red Leader. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious holy books, uh, superstition, and uh, gods. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. Uh, There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and uh, we'll tell you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in TV slash video shows? Uh, yeah. broadcasting here from Knoxville. Larry, you know I'm glad. Tomorrow? Yeah, because you bring yeah. the hard topics and this is an important subject. So there it are is. basically yeah. two video game stores, Epic Game Stores and Steam, where you can get video games. Stop. They are both yeah. free programs. So why uh, are people making such a fuss when a game comes out only on Epic? Uh, Epic is really good. It gives you free games every week. I have an entire show. game, I have an entire that, game no. library. I, I think this is important. Why, why, shouldn't we talk about it? <laughs> no. What? No, no this is a TV show. It's a broadcast from Knoxville. It was broadcast on TV for 10 years, but now they switched over to a video format and they're broadcasting live on YouTube every Wednesday night, I think it's 7 o'clock, 6.37, something like that. Anyway, go to YouTube and search for Free Thought United Coalition of Knoxville. Nice. We'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Uh, Wombat, what's our topic for today? We're going to be talking about how to respond to common questions that you might run into when you might do street epistemology or talking to people about why they believe in what they believe uh, with friends. And I had a conversation with a friend who is a Christian. He asked me some questions after he realized that he may not have the best position to believe in his God. And I think it would be good to just go over some like, how would you respond Um theoretical questions but, but in straight epistemology like yeah like i know <laughs> yeah i know isn't that crazy so like well uh, uh i'll actually throw this to dread pirate dread pirate um would you mind giving us a quick definition of street epistemology and then opening up with our invocation uh, for today a uh, quick definition of street epistemology is uh, the socratic examination of a person's beliefs and the methodology by which they come to, uh, to hold them yeah it's a conversational technique that's it and then with emphasis on the methodology itself, really more. Absolutely. Than the right. Absolutely. All right. The invocation. Okay. Quab be my captain. I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth my bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quencheth my thirst with grog, my goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall follow me all the days of me life, and I will dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Amen. Amen. I love Dale's face the entire time you went through thing. I love the noodliness part. Yeah, that, that was a bit more seafaring than normal. I like it, and I like the hat, right. too. Let's throw out some quick, hey, hey, hellos, how are you guys doing? Dale, how you been? I love that tweet doing jacket, well. by the way. Yeah? Yeah. You, you, yeah, it's very good. It's from Scotland. Nice. You from are dressed Scotland. for radio. <laughs> well, actually, this is video, and... Uh, I just figured if there. anybody's going to if if anybody's going to pay any attention to what I have to say, maybe I should respect <laughs> you know them. Okay. 
Yeah. Very good. And, we and, should and try to, uh, I took a shower too. How many of you can say that? <laughs> I Larry, can't. I can't. <laughs> Larry, what do you got? <laughs> we should probably mention to the people who are listening on WOZO radio here mm -hmm. in Knoxville that is this is also being broadcast uh, live on uh, Dread Pirate Higgs's uh, YouTube's channel but also we we record it video and put it on uh, several channels do a search go to youtube do a search for let's chat or simply do a search for digital free, uh, free thought radio hour and you'll find the videos very nice and then george how you been how's your morning so far oh my morning's great you recently my had morning. surgery how's your recovery coming along oh it's incredible um i am not in pain that's you always see. a good thing. I, I, it's I'm, underrated I am, how good that is. Listen, God is blessing me. I, mm. I, I have to tell you, uh, I, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. um, Hallelujah. I, I am not suffering from surgical pain, and um, that's the good part. I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to have a an occupational therapist who reads the New York Times every day here in. Athens, Tennessee. Oh, so you have stuff to talk about because you're from you're a New Yorker yourself, right? I am, I am, there but she's go. not a New Yorker. She's not a New Yorker. She just wants to dig the news, you know, appropriately. And and I met somebody else here in Athens who also has read the New York Times often. Very so, cool. Talking to know, people is actually talking to people is yeah. the subject of this show. And I think yes, it's yes, cool. yes. Before we do that, Dred, how's your classes coming up? You had a you're going to be teaching pretty soon, aren't you? We're already yeah, I'm still uh, working on the syllabus, um, mm -hmm. and uh, should have that together here by the end of uh, August. Very cool. Are you nervous? Yeah. How do you feel? What's the, how is the uh, noodles, the inner noodles? Well, you know, my, my hope, of course, is to um, help people, uh, you know, hone some of those critical thinking skills uh, in order to you know, regard the universe in a more practical way, I suppose, Very nice. move the magic out of it and, 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 uh, and get to the real substance of what the universe is all about. Cool. Dread George, Pirate, Dread Pirate, I wanted to ask you, is it possible for non-Canadians to attend your course? I would imagine it's going to be open for anyone that's willing to pay the fee. <laughs> 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 or... If you can, if, uh, I don't, I don't want to make it sound bad, but if you can record it somehow and then just release yes. all the, the whole lecture series online, yeah. that would be fantastic. And then yeah. it's open to anybody. Yeah. Uh, Larry, I am digging that Hawaiian shirt. I'm feeling like it's a really festive <laughs> Sunday for you. Yeah, it's it's summer, so I go Hawaiian shirts, and the winter I go uh, felt plaid. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> the secrets are finally revealed. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. I I actually had a really good weekend too. Um, uh, this Friday I went out to go bowling and hiking with a friend of mine who's a Christian, and uh, he explicitly wanted to hang out with me because he wanted to talk about the nature of faith. Because we had a conversation at work one day where he realized that after being 100% confident in his God, that he may not necessarily have the best ground to stand on with regard to his holy belief. And the way how we got there was through a quick five-minute SC conversation. And I think he threw out, like, I know my God's real because of personal experiences and faith. And when I asked him to find faith, it's like, well, just trusting without evidence. And then I asked, is that a hundred percent reliable way to know something's true? And it's like, absolutely not. No way, no way. And I was like, is it possible to have a personal experience that's not going that might be misleading it's like yeah that happens all the time so i asked him like well you're 100 percent confident you have a 100 percent reliable method to get you there is like through really i love this honest feedback too it's like actually i don't i don't think i'm 100 percent confident anymore <laughs> as simple as that and so he he i wanted to ask a lot of things about like okay well if that's the case and I, no one's ever asked me that before no one's ever just like laid it out boom 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 where are you at? Because it sounds like you may not believe in a God. And I was like, no, I'm an, I'm an agnostic atheist. I don't know if a God exists, and I also don't believe that a God exists. That's what those two terms mean, and they're compatible. Mm -hmm. um, so he wants like, okay, well, you got to tell me about this. <laughs> Where do your morals <laughs> come from? <laughs> what do you, who decides what's good for you? Like, and, and some basic apologetics that he heard from his pastor, how would I respond to that? And that was basically the nature of us hanging out. And it was a really fun conversation. I would like to throw out some of the questions he threw out at me, and we'll do a. You got to ask Dale. You got to ask Dale. <laughs> how, how Jesus? How Jesus did it? 
George, raise your hand. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, uh, roundtables, and we're gonna ask George. Since you're excited, we're gonna try this out first. If if a Christian asked you after finding out that you're an atheist, where do your morals come from? How would you respond to that? The way I would respond to that is like this: um, that I have the challenge of having to have a built-in system of ethics that governs my behavior. And I am responsible to myself for, in, for um, enforcing that code in my own life. I have to be a decent person. I, I can't do it with the threat of hell hanging over me or the reward of heaven. I just have to have a very good built-in antenna for doing it. And I have to mention too, that I think that the atheists I've known in general not all of them, but mostly have been very decent people, very humane, compassionate human beings. Cool. Um, Dread Pyre, how would you handle that? Let me ask you this. Uh, we're hanging out. We're having a good time. I told you I'm a Christian. I tell you I believe in God. You tell me you're an atheist, and that shakes my world. And I'm like, well, well, well you're an atheist, but you're, a good, you're such a good person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There so must be something weird here. Where do you get your morals from? Because you're a nice guy. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think it's just an interest in others' well-being. Um, you know, in as much as uh, I have a selfish interest in promoting my own well-being, it makes sense to promote others' well-being so that we can work together to be well together. And that's what do you mean by well-being? I, I get my morals from. Just going to poke. What do you mean by well-being? Well, uh, we all want to thrive. Uh, we don't simply want to subsist, I'm sure. Um, certainly I don't. Um, and I don't want to just kind of maintain a status quo where, you know, the drudgery of everyday living is drudgery. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think we all have dreams and desires and ambitions. And, and in as much as we can uh, uh, work towards advancing our own, it again is in our own best interest to advance those of others. Okay. Not bad. I like it. Dale, as a, someone who does not believe in an active agent, supernatural being controlling our lives on a daily basis, like where do you get your morals from? If not given to you by an active deity? Well, I, uh, I actually adhere to what Jesus said, do unto others. Uh, that sounds like a pretty good plan. It makes me want to. That sounds like half of a moral philosophy. Me. What? <laughs> that Say sounds again? like half of a moral philosophy so far. Uh, do <laughs> unto others. There's like a really important other part of that, or else I'm just out there punching people, right? So, like, do unto others. Anyone want to finish that? As you would have others do unto you, isn't that? Oh, we got the atheists. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. As you would have others want to do unto you, like. Yeah. But anyway, Dell, what do you got? Well, I'm just saying that, as far as I'm concerned, is good enough. And you all may be ascribing it to uh, being one of the Jesus originals, but it was not. So uh, if you can say that Jesus simply repeated mm. do unto others, fine. Mm -hmm. But okay. it seems like a pretty nice way. I wouldn't mind being around people who would treat me that way. And... Uh, I would think that those people would like to be treated that way. As far as any more ethics or morals, I don't really think I need any more. Uh, the law pretty well takes care of me not killing people. Although I do mistrust people that says I don't murder because it's against the law, because it makes me think that wasn't against the law, those people would be out running around killing everyone. Mm. Uh, it also makes me suspicious when a Christian says I don't, you know, I do. I, 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 I shall not kill because the Bible says so, which makes me think that you really don't have that much of a problem with killing, except that God says not to. And that's what I have to say about that. Dread Pirate, I have a question. what do you got? Uh, Dread Pirate, what do you got? Well, you guys heard of the Platinum Rule? No, tell me about it. So the platinum rule is do unto others as they would want done to them. Right. So there's like a additional condition of treating people how you want to be treated. It's some people want to be treated how they want to be treated. And I find like that is an overlooked ideal when you just look at what Jesus says. 
Because yep. especially nowadays, right. there's a lot of people who want to speak up and say, hey, I'd prefer if you didn't do this to me. Well, it's like, well, I like being treated this way, so I'm going to treat you like that. It's like, no, we live in a society, treat people how they want to be treated too. George, what do you got? I got a question for how Jesus did it. Dale, um, how prominent is the golden rule in the Bible? Not very. Cool. I mean, if people want to... There's a lot of murdering and killing and raping and, and slavery and Jesus himself scourged uh merchants in the uh temple yeah and, and he when, totally killed he, that fig tree jesus himself was not beyond a little scourging when a little scourging <laughs> <was>. <laughs> so uh, i'm sure the merchants did not like that 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 pro- that rule probably breaks down right there but yeah. it's a good guideline and the scourging, you have to remember that it wasn't a, a, a moment of passion because he, he literally took some time to go over and create a scourge. He made his own <laughs> scourge, right. and then he went in yeah. and started beating people with it. Was it was funny yeah. about that. Yeah. Dread, but what do you want to do it? Oh, sorry. No, the golden rule became, I haven't, the, golden rule became like, the wooden rule. Uh, yeah, that's true. Rule. Okay. Larry, I, I thought you were finished um, with the point. Sorry. Well, you know, I just wanted to address this uh, morality thing. Um, George said you have a responsibility to yourself, but I just wanted to throw in also that you have a responsibility to your society, the people yeah. that you live with. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the standard for morality? Harm. Harm is the standard. Uh, don't mm-hmm. do harm to your neighbor. Don't do physical, emotional, Needless harm. financial, any kind of harm. It's, it's just look you don't want to do it you know as, as much as you wouldn't like to have it done to you which brings mm. us to confucius 500 years before jesus said that what he did confucius said the opposite basically he said don't do unto others what you wouldn't have done to yourself and i Ooh, think that's really i like more that to the point. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I set larry up for that thank you yeah that's nice I appreciate it nice um, larry you have a full and, article out on this I do. I have an yeah. old article on it. I can go to digitalfreethought.com and the blog area. And one last point I'd like to make is that Christians all, uh, they don't get their morals from the Bible, even though they say they do. And I can, pr- I can prove it in like two sentences. Hmm. If, uh, if they all got their morals from the Bible and they got all of their morals from the Bible, hmm. then they would all believe the same things. They wouldn't have any morality conflicts between themselves. And we know that they do. Uh, the Catholics uh, and the and the Baptists and Protestants, uh, uh, all the different types of uh, you know believe different things as far as uh, abortions and uh, gays and homosexuals. You know the the things that um, they call morally bad. There are sects that believe that they're okay, hmm. and if they and they would also believe that uh, if they actually got their morals from the Bible, that they should kill unruly children or homosexuals or kill women who are uh, not virgins on their wedding night. You know, so they pick and choose and they use an independent moral system, one of their own, yep. to do that picking and choosing from the Bible. You guys were all hitting the nail right on the head. I think what I basically said, and this is a more of a elaborate conversation that we're having, but like my morals come from an understanding that my actions have consequences. And I want those consequences to maximize my well-being, like Dread Pirate mentioned, and reduce the amount of needless harm that's caused as a result as what Larry was saying. And it's a very, very simple thing to understand that doesn't necessarily need to be written in a holy book to be true. And I, and as Larry said in two sentences, you can break it down. I do my, my, my way of doing it is like, if the Bible told you not to steal, okay, let's, the Bible tells you not to steal. So you don't steal. <laughs> if it wasn't in the Bible, would you just go around stealing everything? And they'd be like, right. no, of course not. It's like, it doesn't sound like you need it in the Bible for you to not do it. Right. right. So it doesn't need right. to be in a holy book for it to be true. Like you can look at, your own consequences of your actions and realize, Hey, this is a good thing for me to do. This is a bad thing. We have that. We have that innate ability evolutionarily because we are our social species and the people who don't <laughs> either die off very quickly or end up in boxes for a long period of time. And, and that's just the thing it is. Dred, you want to get cool. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Just another thing about uh, morals coming from the Bible. Um, the idea of people doing good only under threat of punishment. Mm. It's not doing good for good's sake, you know, yeah. doing good for goodness sake. Yeah. It's doing good under a threat of punishment. From well, obedience God. is not morality. I see, George. 
Yeah, exactly. Precisely my point. Yes, yeah. yes. George, what do you got? Well, you know, in listening to all this, uh, I... I have to confess to myself that I think that the Bible is a big work of fiction. I mean, and, there's some and, there's some real locations in there. I'm really upset now. That that totally means everything else is true. What are you talking about? <laughs> Jordan's a real place. Yeah, Jordan. Okay, so Jordan's a real place, but yeah, um, but I mean, the whole the whole thing is is made up. So no, you think sprinkle some real places into it, and, and maybe yeah. Jesus it's was around some fantasized Jewish history, basically <laughs> built around real places. There are some yeah. things that are really exaggerated. I can see some basis of truth, like some things happening, and then people without the technology or knowledge to to compartmentalize what actually happened come up with a folklore to explain it instead. I can see certain things like that. Some things though are so mundane that it's like, yeah, that probably happened. <laughs> It rained, or there was a desert, or I'm sorry, there was a famine. It's like, yeah, that probably happened. Uh, yeah. It probably rained. Some people's kids probably died. Like these things happen. But did a supernatural being cause it? That's the stretch that that I need some support. Right. For. Mm-hmm. And Ty, probably not raining manna from heaven. Well, I mean, if it's mm-hmm. hail, you could technically eat that, and that is white stuff <laughs> from. <laughs> not very I nutritious. Would... What is, ma- what, what is manna anyway yeah that's a good, what's the deal with manna um we before we head out to the break uh dale you wanted to say something go for it manna is considered to be part of part of a plant that mm. has a little nodule on it and when it rained from heaven if it sprouted in the morning you might thought that it fell from heaven the night before oh well, i guess so not a miracle anyway i guess well, more yeah. Yeah. yeah, like plants just... Man, it actually means bread. But I'm going to have to start calling hail manna now. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Might as well. Hail um, manna. I got a quick, I got a quick roundtable question because this is related to morality as well. Um, after I told him that, he was like, well, then who decides what's good? Because in his worldview, there's an authority that determines what's good and what's bad. And lacking that, and even with this system that we have, who decides what's good? Uh, Dread, I'm going to throw it out to you real quick before we head to the break. What do you think? Who decides what's good? Well, I think overall it's... Loaded question, it's, by the way. It's, that's dependent in your culture, so mm-hmm. geographically, uh, culturally, um, and over time, because certainly our views uh, on morality have shifted um, you know, over, over the course of even a couple hundred years. Um, so I, I think there's no single authority. It's, it's a kind of a uh, spread spread out cool it's like a communal effort right yes exactly george what who decides what's good for you i do mm, i love it i love it uh yeah. it, it's pretty it's pretty simple i i first of all i have maybe this is a misguided belief but i believe that most people are essentially good decent people and i'm willing to trust them to to do what's right you know what to to have an, an an inner guidance about what's good and what's right i like that dale there's some people of course i think we need police to lock them up but you know. sure it gets crazy dale, yeah but, but for the most part i think most people are decent dale who decides what's good for you george nice <laughs> larry who decides what's good for you I agree with George. I do, and society does, because different societies and different people have different views on what's good and what's bad. Um, And we generally tend to clump together those who believe the same things, Hmm. Uh, but basically each individual has to decide. Now, I also, one of the things I like to mention is that the Bible is a big Rorschach test, (laughs) in in that you look at it and you pick out things that make sense to you yeah. and you mm-hmm. interpret uh what do you call it yeah internalize them yeah and it tells more about the person than it does about what's in the bible because everything's in the bible right you know? 
And my yeah. thing, it would be because we have different cultures, there's going to be different variances on good, but we commonly <laughs> agree on some fundamental principles of like life is more preferable than death. Being healthy is more preferable than being sure. sick and so on. And we can come up with mm -hmm. a big list of rules that we all have in commonality with each other. We so even have, though some cultures, books of law. <laughs> yeah. So, so even though some cultures we're getting towards the bottom of the break, but even though some cultures actually might diverge on some things, um, we can look at the ones that diverge and objectively we come to an assessment on, okay, so you think women shouldn't vote? Uh, we let women vote, and because of that, we get twice as many engineers because men and women in the workforce are engineers. We can objectively right. see better bridges as a result. We have a better workforce, our GDP is higher. Why don't you do that too? Because this is objectively benefiting us. So like, uh, uh, even though people differ, we can use standards to figure out who actually has the best objective way of living, even with subjective principles <laughs> on what good is. It's really right. interesting. But we're at the bottom of the break. Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. You know it's a good thing when I see bumps on my neck and arms rise up so it's a good thing when I'm thinking you know what I'm going to say with just a week in the air. It's a good thing when I'm down, you call and you come around and you keep on calling, yeah. You know what? I had my reservations. I know that took some patience. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Here come the cool kids. 
check out the cool kids. She says the cool kids don't think we're cool kids. She likes them though. They're her new friends, she likes her new friends. She says her new friends don't like her old friends. I like them though. Spend our birthdays at the park swings. It's not a big deal. It's just a simple thing. We like to go. We'd watch the reruns of my three sons. We'd sing the theme song, and now it's all gone. We like to go. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the show. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Doubter Five, and this is Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. Uh, let's talk about the Free Thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, uh, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. ASK has more than 1,000 members now, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just go to Google and say Knoxville Atheist and see what comes up. Another large free-thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee, or RET. They've been around more than 25 years. They're a large growing group, and uh, you can find them at rationalist.org. Uh, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you could still go to meet up and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one! Nice job, guys. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Knoxville Atheist Call-In TV show. Well, it's called Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville Online, and you can find it on YouTube streaming. Um, they've got several old shows and uh, doing new shows every week. Go to YouTube and search Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville, or you can also search for Free Thought Forum Knoxville and find our 10-year archive on there. Uh, also, if you're interested in getting involved with the TV or this radio show, just come to an ESC or RET uh, meeting or Facebook page and tell us that you'd like to be involved. Uh, go to Facebook and look for Atheist Society of Knoxville or Rationalists of East Tennessee. On the show with us today, we are our co-host, Wombat, and we have guests, George, Red Leader, and uh, Jared Pirate Higgs. And where are we going to pick up on this? Okay, so I I had it right here, guys. It was right here. Where is it? Dread Pirate, where is it? George, where is, where is it? Where is the love? Where is the love? 
the love, the love, love. Where is the love? Where is the love? Where is the love? <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Oh, sorry. All right. All right. So uh, our question today comes from uh, Multi Fairy Ace over at r slash Street Epistemology on Reddit.com. Um, his question is: um, I've been watching a lot of SC uh, Street Epistemology and call-in shows, and I've come to the conclusion that confirmation bias is the main threat to communication in my personal relationship. How? Okay. So he's asking then. I worry what, what could happen. What confirmation bias? We'll get into it. That's a great point. We'll talk about what confirmation bias is. But uh, he wants to know: Have and does anyone else feel the same way? And what are good responses to let someone know or discover that they are a victim to confirmation bias? Dread Pirate, would you mind defining what confirmation bias is, and then how would you go about it? Well, confirmation bias is is sifting through incoming information. Uh, and picking only those pieces of information that support your position. Uh, mm, so it's avoiding picking. conflicting information. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Very good. I'll be how a professor you... one day. <laughs> you will be. How would you, how would you let someone know that they're a victim to confirmation bias? Uh, gently. Because uh, you, you don't want somebody to... Uh, you know, dig in their heels and get defensive. Uh, that's, right. the, that's the biggest concern in any kind of conversation where you're mm -hmm. trying to let someone know that they have some uh, cognitive bias. But we should you don't, you don't want them to fight you. We all are. Yes, Victim that's of it. a fantastic point. That's Larry, point or Larry, I think you hit it right on the head. The way how I do it is be open to the idea that even I am susceptible to confirmation bias. And what I look for when I respond is not me teaching someone that they're, they're a victim of confirmation bias, but to ask from their point of view, if they have a way of disconfirming what they believe to be true. Cause at least then right. we're, we're working together to see if they have a frame of reference of what they believe and what would it take for them to show that they can't believe that thing anymore. And so what I mean by disconfirmation is say, I believe I only have white socks and I, I would simply ask, okay, so what would it make you change? Your, what would make you change your mind that you have any other color sock? And I would have to think about, okay, well, if I pulled out black socks from my sock drawer, that would be a good example. Or if I had red socks, that would show that I don't only have white socks. Now I'm thinking about how, what would it take for me to show that I'm wrong? And that process is so useful because that's how you get out of confirmation bias. Cause now you're yeah. building a criteria that it would take for you to actually change your mind. Uh, Dale, what do you have? I have a much better example of confirmation bias. Okay. If you watch Fox news, you have confirmation bias. Oh, here's, here's our weekly Trump dump. <laughs> Trump dump. <laughs> view, 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 view. Okay. Uh, no, I'm talking about Fox news. Right. You watch Fox News, you are wholly uninformed. Cool. You are uh, and disinformed or going after that information that you want to be supported. I don't know how many times I had somebody say such and such, and then I say, well, explain it to me. Mm. And they go, well, I can't explain it. Go watch Hannity. He will explain it to you. Right. George, uh, you're on mute yep. right now. So unmute yourself and feel free to jump back in the conversation. Okay. Um. You know, I live on a little dead-end street. There's only five houses on this street. And a neighbor across the street Trump listens neighbor. to Rush. He listens to Rush Limbaugh every day. And when I moved here, he was flying a big Confederate battle flag. Um, my neighbor directly to the west just... Um, put in central heating and air and along with it got cable TV and told me how much he admires Fox News. My neighbor across the street um, opined gently that Fox News is a little bit too far to the left for him. <laughs> and okay. so my, my question is faced with these realities, being the guy who, who reads The Guardian every day, um, Where's our point of entry? George, I have, I'd like to supplement one other question on top of that directly to you. Um, George, how would you deal with someone who has confirmation bias and how would you let them know that they're a victim to it? Boy, I've been thinking about that for days, to be honest with you. Because um, every day in my mind, I rehearse talking with my neighbor across the street. Okay, and, in your head? Um, 
Yeah, I rehearse in my head. I confess I do this. And, and I'm aware I've got my own biases, you know. Sure. We, as you said, uh, we all do. Where do I come to him from? You know, and, and, and th- I have a little bit of an answer to okay. my question. What do you got? Which is, and it's something I think I mentioned here before, is to tell him I stories, you know, to to come at him with confessions of my own that, for instance, I have been accused of being um, racially biased in my life. And so start there, because this guy has, you know, like, like find some point of commonality. Cool. And, and even start from a confession, you know? I like building rapport with the people that I talk to and let them know where I'm coming from as a way to like soften the blow. But I feel like the question of, and this could use some wordsmithing, but basically how would you know if you're wrong? Don't say wrong. People hate that. But like, how yeah, would you know if it yeah. was some other case or like, how would you, depending on what the circumstances, how would you know if you had different colors, colors of sock? How would you know if MSNBC is also confirmation or, or is also biased? Like what would it take for you to think something different? Like ask them process questions where they would need to give you a criteria because that's where you make them go from, oh, he's just telling me an opinion to, he's asking me to think. And when you can make them think for themselves, that's where the magic happens. We started the show talking about um, a friend of mine who was a Christian and he was asking some questions about the nature of um, how do atheists get morals and who decides what's good for them. We've been going out over the show today. Um, I'd like to go over the next thing that he brought up, which was sort of like, a, <laughs> it is sort of like an interesting concept. So the idea is um, we, was, we were talking about Christians in general because he was like, well, the Bible says X, Y, Z. I was like, are you familiar with like different denominations of Christianity? And some don't even have the same version of the Bible. Nigerians have a completely different Bible than like the ones in the West. Uh, there's a black Jesus. <laughs> there's like, there's ideas cool. that aren't carried <laughs> over and it makes a lot more sense because they're a lot closer to Jerusalem. But I'm just saying like, um, there's ideas that aren't, aren't common among all Christians. And what he said was, Oh, well though, those are heathens. Like anyone who doesn't believe in these five things that everyone agrees on because of Christianity, because St. Augustine said them, then they're not, a true Christian. And I asked them immediately, like, well, were there Christians before that guy came up with those five rules? He's like, yeah. And then that was enough to like make him think. But I, 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 I'm concerned with the idea of the, um, like no true Scotsman fallacy. No true like, Scotsman. Exactly. Yeah. So like, uh, What's we, we, I'm we, we'll, George, I'll get, I'll get you. I already know. Uh, dread will, I have a question for you. How do you deal with someone who's like, Oh, well, anyone who doesn't believe what I believe isn't one of my, one of my things. Uh, what, what do you think about that? And you can throw in a definition for you no know, true Scotsman if you want. Hmm. Maybe maybe somebody else could feel this. I I, I got to think Wait, about that. Yeah, I thought it was Larry. Too. Uh, Dale, were you saying something? No, no, it was uh, an excellent question. Oh. <laughs> Larry, it is. What, what do you what do you uh, what do you think of the idea of? Um, someone saying, well, anyone who doesn't believe in my version of Christianity isn't a real Christian. So that solves that problem. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing. It's, it's similar to the, the, the uh, Christian saying, uh, you know, I know that guy killed three people and he was, he said he was a Christian, but he's not a Christian. A Christian wouldn't do that. Right. And it's the same thing. Uh, because as soon as somebody does something bad, they're, you know, they're no longer a Christian. So right. therefore a bottom line, no Christian can ever do anything bad. Mm. Right. And, uh, that gets us back to the no true Scots in which I'll explain here. Uh, for take a second it's like you're in scotland you, you say you're talking to somebody and you say i'm going to have a whiskey and oh and put a uh, put a shot of rye in it oh no true scotsman would ever have a whiskey with rye in it mm-hmm. and they say well mcdougall up the street he uh, he likes rye in his whiskey yeah but he's not a true scotsman <laughs> you know, so anybody who doesn't fit their definition of, of a christian or a scotsman or whatever they are automatically uh not included. Yeah. I, I want to just take a moment and give appreciation for Larry's fake made up Scottish names. McDougal. <laughs> McPherson. McTavish. Like, yeah. Mc, McTavish, all that stuff. It was like, well, my great grandmother was a McMacken. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Dread, do you feel better or should we go to someone? Um, hey. 
yeah, let's see if somebody else is, is interested. I, I, I've been talking a lot, so. Uh, Dill, how do you feel about the idea of a no true Scotsman uh, fallacy? Like if someone said, hey, uh, you're not really an atheist or you're not really a deist unless you do X, Y, Z. And you're like, I've been a deist by, for an extended period of my life. It's like, well, you're not a true deist because you don't have this thumbtag or something like that. Like, have you, have you dealt with that? How do you deal with it, et cetera? No one's ever told me that I wasn't a true deist. Dale, you're not a true deist. <laughs> okay, now that now this happened, I would, I would fall back on the golden rule. You know, treat people as you would like them to be treated. For example, if someone is a Mormon and they say that they're Christian, well, they are not considered Christian by most of the Protestant religions. Right. However, if they say that they're Christian, who am I to disagree? Right. So who are you to disagree with me on me being a deist? Who are you to disagree? Okay. George. Yeah, see, there's, there's the answer. Yeah. George, what do you got? If I say I'm a deist, well, you've got no business saying that I'm not. My neighbor's brother came at me. Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out what to leave out. Um, uh, came at me with the statement that because I did not believe in Jesus, that I was not going to go to heaven. And um, put a card under my front door for a, a fake Jewish um, organization near me, which which is uh, um, uh, just for for those of you who aren't familiar, I I call myself a Jewish atheist, which means I, I come from a Jewish background, and. Uh, what am I going to say to people who come to my door promoting Christianity? Um, I'm offended by that. I mean, Jews, Jews don't proselytize. Amen. We don't, we don't do that. If you want Amen. to become a, yeah, right. In fact, the, the tradition of men, Judaism. If, if they come to your door in pairs. Sorry, What's that? George, it's a bad joke. What do you got? Okay. Um, I mean, the, the tradition in Judaism is that if you want to become Jewish, you got to go beg the rabbi to do it, and you got to beg him three times because he's going to turn you down the first two. He's not going. He's not going to believe that you're sincere. So when people, so so here, somebody shoves a card under my door. There, there are these fake Jewish communities, you know, like. Um, Jews for Jesus, for instance, they do proselytize, and it's bizarre, you know. So I, my my word to these guys is: real Jews don't proselytize. Oh, interesting. So you are the one saying, "Hey, you're not a true Jew," or "You're not a." Jew. I am, and I'm an atheist. However, mm, so there's like layers here. There's layers here, yes. We'll do. However, and there are these these um, uh, latter day Jews. Um, they're called uh, Hasidim, and they're on television too. And they're they're. Um, uh, I'm trying to look for the word. Uh, um, they have like these messianic rabbis that they wrap themselves around. You know these these guys who. Um, um, they're really devoted, but beyond that, like yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, and and I say to myself, well, okay, they say they're real Jews. They are, you know, they 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 walk around in clothing from the 17th century, for God's sake, yeah, and and exist in New York State, in in complete communities. So, well, uh, I'm actually going to yeah. throw this out to Larry because you might agree with me here. We are in a desperate situation where a holy being, a holy supernatural, all-powerful, omnipresent being says, these are my people, these aren't my people, but I'm not going to give you a, a, a measuring stick to determine. So you're just going to have to figure that out for yourselves. And as a result, you have bifurcations upon bifurcations, upon decisions, upon subgroups, uh, upon rivals and enemies who basically live on the same block and agree the exact same thing, except one pastor has okay. a blue car and the other one has a red Cadillac, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> they can't agree with each other. Doesn't this look like an example where it would have been a lot better if the God just came down and been like, these oh, guys. Gosh, that, that's the only answer. You know, this group says that God chose them. This group said that God chose them and mm. they have conflicting, um, um, morals they have conflicting uh, commandments um mm, and they very true and the, 
it would all be settled if a you know, deity came down and, and said, I'm here, that's my people. Right. But it never happens. This is right. not something that we've yeah. ever seen. I see, George. I was saying to my friend that we should have a measuring stick that just says Christian. It's like one notch <laughs> measuring stick. And you hold it up and it will magically reach where it needs to be to be like, this guy's a Christian. And if it's not, it doesn't go anywhere. You're like, this guy's Christian. That's not Christian. If we had that, we wouldn't need these kinds of five rules from St. Augustine, et cetera. George, real quick, and then we'll go back to Dredd. Dredd, George, what do you Well, got? I just want to say how much I love Larry's um, little benediction at the end where he says, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. And the only way I would modify that was to say, you are going to somebody else's hell. I have hell. memes that say that. <laughs> <laughs> no truer statement in the world than but Larry I, saying, I have yeah. memes. <laughs> yeah. and I, put, I put in parentheses at the bottom, it says everybody is. Yeah. Uh, cool. uh, yes. Dread Pirate, what do you have? So um, usually in the, the new true Scotsman situation, I just reference, and usually that's, that comes up in the, in the context of an SE, straight epistemology conversation, um, I end up just referencing previous uh, conversations where, for instance, I might've had a conversation with Mormons who would have said this very same thing and then ask my current interlocutor, how would you respond to that? Like, you know, if uh, the Mormons had said the exact same thing that, um, you know, their way is the true way, uh, Joseph Smith, he's the final prophet, um, and if you're not believing our way, you're, you're not coming where we're going. Right. Uh, and ask that person, then how do you respond to that? And I'm going to bring up something kind of important that builds on top of what you said, Dredd. It also feeds back on what Dale was saying. Um, like, who are you to question this? Or like, basically, why even believe that claim in the first place? Or like, how'd you figure that out? Um, when I'm doing SC, and we've talked about SC before multiple times in the show, even on this channel, but I think of it in three parts. There's the person who has the belief, there's their conclusion, and then there's a through line called the methodology or the epistemology. And I mm -hmm. want to ask right. questions about that because if you sever that link or if you make it stronger, it's a good thing because you either free a person from a bad conclusion or come with a better reason to reach their conclusion. And both of those things are good. And so mm -hmm. if someone says, hey, um, I don't believe these, these people aren't real Christians. Rather than dig into the nature of what it means to be a Christian and what philosophies they're following and what schism has, what you know, uh, morals or commandments and not, not that's yeah. digging into the conclusion. And there's a lot of ego built in there, a lot of ego that mm -hmm. that person identifies with. Instead, it's a lot easier to just be like, you don't think they're Christians, how'd you come to that conclusion? Let them right. think about that. Let them do the thinking. And then they have to come up with criteria to base that off of. And they say, oh, well, you know, some guy in past said there was five rules and you either follow if you're a Christian or if you're not a Christian. It's like, were you Christians before that? Yes. Okay, so it doesn't seem like those five rules are really the point. What other criteria do you have? I don't think I have one. It's like, then why do you believe it so strongly? I guess I don't. And that was literally like the three-part combo that helped us move on from that, you know, justification that he had that, Anyone right. who didn't believe that he did wasn't a real Christian. It's, and and he, I, did that, he did that thinking on his own. Dread Pirate, what do you have? It, it, well, I, I just wanted to, to add to that, that uh, you end up through that conversational method is you end up putting tools in a toolkit for them that they can then use in other situations outside of the, of the, oh. the immediate uh, circumstance. Yeah, and I'll show you how it goes bad. This is when you start digging into the conclusion and you don't wanna do this. Say he said, hey, you have to believe in the resurrection to be a Christian, right? In the Bible itself, there are other people being crucified along with Jesus, right? They died before they saw Jesus get resurrected. Yet Jesus was the one who told them verbatim that they were, they were gonna be saved and be sent to, to heaven and be sitting aside next to him in, the, in, in heaven. But if I start going to that, that triggers all the, the Rockshore Bible quotes where it's like, whoa, no, 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 no. You see Mary in chapter 466 is like, and you don't wanna dig into those right. weeds. Exactly. Stick to the methodology. Do you have a good reason to believe that? And if they present it to you, great. But if not, give them the time to realize that on their own. Don't teach them. Get yeah. them to the conclusion. Work with them. And if you can't get there together, that says way more than you just telling them, hey, you're wrong. George, what do you have? Um, boy, I am thinking. I have met two people <laughs> good, here good. Since, I've, since I've come to Tennessee. I have met two people 
who only read the Bible. That's that's all they, that's all they know. Sorry, right. it's my phone. It's okay. It's okay. So George was saying like he's met people who <laughs> reached the Bible, and he'll get up to us. No, no doubt. Also, we're going to be having a conversation with George um, about more serious topics and that you can have that to look forward to in the future. But I think we're rounding out towards the end of the episode. Larry, why don't you, um, oh, actually, Larry, I want you to do the catchphrase. So, Dred, where can we find you? What's some good stuff that we can look forward to? Well, on Sunday mornings at uh, 8 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, whichever it happens to be, we are streaming live on YouTube at Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. And we have a couple of folks on right now. I, I just wanted to point out that uh, one of our regular viewers says he has something that he calls conviction bias. I am convinced, therefore it's true. Mm, That's very true. That's pretty good. Yeah. And I think we learned a lot of good things just in this conversation too. And thank you guys so much for helping me like crystallize the conversation I had. Um, I would say as a, just like a quick review, um, we get our morals from being social animals in a social space and, and it's okay for us to come up with our own rules for how we live because we can compare our rules against each other and come up with even better systems. And there tends to be way more overlap with the things that we agree on when we want to all live together peacefully and, and thrive as, as a community than there are desperate things. And we can work on those desperate things. Um, also don't, um, don't attack people, talk about their methodologies. And um, here's the thing, don't dig into the weeds of their conclusions. Like if they have like a really, you know, intricate understanding of the Bible, you don't need to talk about any of that. Just be like, do I have a good reason to believe any of this? And, <laughs> and that's the better way to frame the conversation rather than is this verse uh, con conflating with a verse 4648? You don't have to go to that. Just ask about the methodology of how they came to the conclusion, not about the conclusion themselves because you'll believe it if they give you a good reason and you have to be open to that. And then um, you can find examples of SE on my channel. It's at Let's Chat, or Let's Chat on, on YouTube. Dale, you have a bust there. What's going on there? What's that severed head? This is one of three sculptures that I've done is dedicated to my hometown. This is Estes Kipopper. He okay. he is uh, in the news recently because of the antitrust trial of uh, uh, Senate hearings that are going on. He championed antitrust and uh, uh, anti-monopoly, uh, and he ran for president. A very very impressive man. He was from Madisonville. Nice, very cool. What was his name again? Estes Kifaver. Kifaver. Very cool. Um, George, I know you probably don't have anything to present, but I am looking forward to having that conversation with you, and I think we can share that together. Yeah? Okay. Can we do it in public? I would love that. Well, it'll be recorded and, and shown in public, so yeah, it'll be on the internet. That's even more public than people realize. <laughs> and Larry, uh, why don't you close this out? Uh, this has been Digital Free Thought Radio, RNWZO Radio 103.9 uh, FM here in Knoxville. Be sure to visit my blog at digitalfreethought.com. Click on the blog button uh, for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheists.org, and we'll try to get to them in the future shows. Uh, if you'd like to listen to prior shows, you can go to digitalfreethought.com, but they're also available on podcasts throughout uh, the web, iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, Podcast.com, et cetera, et cetera. Just do a search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hmm. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to uh, like and subscribe. Hey! So you can be notified uh, when new episodes are posted. And remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell, and the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. Uh, join us next week, 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, uh, right here in Knoxville for a Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. See you then. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye. everybody. Amen.